Okay, it's 6 p.m. Uh, call the uh, Town Hall School Administration Building Committee meeting to order uh, on June 29, 2022. Uh, first item on the agenda is the roll call. Uh, George Hooper is absent. I'm Paul Melarani. I'm the co-chair. I'll be chairing the meeting this evening. Uh, I'm present. If you're present and I call your name, say here. Diane Allen. Here. Kevin Kyra. John Doherty. Jack Holloway? Here. Paul Ruggiero? Here. Glenn Brand? Dan Pallotta? Here. Jeff Hull? Here. And Stephen Turner here. is here for Jesse Fennelly. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, first, uh, second item on the agenda is the approval of the meeting minutes from June 15th, 2022. You should have received an email from George with the minutes as an attachment, and if you've had a chance to look them over, I'll entertain any discussion right now. Uh, so I, I believe uh, the, the fourth paragraph down right at the end uh, details any more, uh, give us any more details on 630. I think that should be 629, right? That would be 629. 629, correct, yep. I don't remember doing that, so. Yeah, it was Ruggiero. Well, maybe I did. I think I did do that. You did it? Yeah, I think I did. Da, 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 da. OM. So uh, next meeting, 629. Okay, I have those changes, and I'll um, pass those on to the chairman. And you have those, Dan? I will uh, make the changes. Okay. You can, you, have the, you can make the changes, right? Right. Okay. And I'll uh, take notes tonight. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve those minutes from the. Uh, Second. Moved by uh, John Doherty, seconded by Jack Holloway. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, so moved. Well, Unanimous. I wasn't here, so. One abstention. Yeah. Oh, Since I wasn't sorry, here, yep. I'll yep. abstain from now. And you got that in these minutes, right? Okay, great. All righty. Um, item four on the agenda is discussion by the OPM on the geotech update for the site. Dan Pallotta. So uh, we have all the pricing in for the geotech. It looks like UTS, the same low bidder that we got for uh, the senior center, will be doing the borings for this site also. So um, we're, we're going to work on getting the contract with, through with, with uh, the town manager and get them scheduled. And his name? UTS. UTS. Right. So, and I'll give you that paperwork uh, either tomorrow or Friday. Okay. Right. Any questions? Any discussion? So, I just, in terms of uh, where will they be generally around the site and various other No, we got, a, we got a boring uh, drawing from the architect, and they'll be drilling exactly where the borings need to go. Okay. Uh, the survey will go out and put the states in same spots you know on an hourly basis we come back and stake it so we get the survey plan that's what we got under contract and then we bring them back hourly just to stake where the borings are because we don't know where the building's going to be at the time that we award the uh, survey yeah so all right it typically goes by the day correct me if I'm wrong it typically yeah. goes by the day they'll punch as many holes as they can and so we put some extras on there if they if things go great and um, and they have more time um, we gave them some kind of alternatives where we could learn a little bit more information. Um, Civil engineer also asked at some point um, if we could do some test pits, and it could be that I could work that out with, we could work that out with George and maybe somebody in town could do it, for example, um, rather than bringing somebody in with a machine on a, on a flatbed. But we don't need that immediately. Um, that's just for, um, to check out um, Groundwater, in addition to what we'll learn from the borings, and then for stormwater, take a look at the soils. So, that so the, on both sites, I'll need to coordinate with the DPW to dig the holes. So the engineers for both uh, his engineer and the engineer on the on the senior center will come out and and, dish, and watch the perks. 
so that they can log them in and they, you know, their final designs go around those perks. Well, we don't need that now. And do they issue a report then to yes. people? Well, they'll issue a perk rate. Okay. And then the perk rate, Diane, gets calculated into this, which determines the size of the subsurface detention system. Okay. So um, we'll know, believe it or not, we'll kind of know what the borings, because the materials will kind of tell us whether they're silty and which won't drain well or gravelly that will drain well. Mm -hmm. We'll know by the end of the day on the senior center <laughs> tomorrow what we got, okay. hopefully. And in regarding the, the high school um, uh, borings. Um, high school? Uh, the high school, the town hall slash school administration building. Um, the, uh, the, those borings, um, you said you've ordered even a few extras. If they have time. So yeah, we have a series of them within the footprint of the building and then a couple outside. Okay. Um, but then we we added a couple extra locations. If they have extra time, they could punch some more holes. Good. Because I'd like to see the more the merrier. I'd feel more comfortable. Okay, I, good. Yeah, I just don't think I don't think it's worth paying for two days to, to yeah, have no. it done. But um, I think get as many in there as they can. And they can. Good. The boring the boring's primarily are for uh, structural. Structural. The weight of the building, the type of materials the building is sitting on. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, the yeah. perk rate. And the groundwater surveys, with per perking, yeah. are what I think your concern, your your concerns had been in the past on this site, right. are water related, and those will, you know, we'll we'll be doing some searching around just to make sure we get it correctly. Well, I, I am also concerned about ledge, and if mm -hmm. as long as it's reasonable, fine. <laughs> I don't want to get any surprises there. Well, that's why, that's why we're doing this. We want to see right. it, um, w where it is and if it's there. Yeah, right. Um, you know, they, if they go down 20 feet and they don't find anything, that's far enough. Um, we're not going to have anything that's going to go that deep. So. Right, 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 right. We're, we're still talking about some sort of retainer wall behind the, the, uh, the building. Uh, the building itself is going to retain the soil. Oh, okay. For the, mo for the most part. We may end up, and I'll point it out, on, I, we haven't modeled retaining walls yet because it's, um, we don't know exactly where they're going to go or what they're going to look like, but I'll point out, you know, where we might want to come in for exiting out of the building off the ground floor, for example. We can, we can get into that, too, during Phil's presentation. So, uh, any other questions about the geotech? Uh, Dan, just uh, timing-wise, I just want to make sure that we're on time and on schedule uh, with the geotech stuff and we're not yeah. falling behind. Good. Okay. Um, Okay, we'll move on to the next item. Before I do, I just want the uh, record to reflect that Selectman Kyra uh, is now present at the meeting. Um, very good. All right, item number five is a presentation by Johnson and Roberts. Phil, give us what you got. Change um, for alternative for number five and for number seven. Number 
five, it flips the building, and I know we've talked about this, but I just want to point out what the differences are so that people understand um, in case somebody asks, right? Okay. Just, just so that we have the answer. And then the last one is um, we're showing the rear portion of the building in a couple of these models with panels on them, and we've taken the panels off the front, but we have them on the back, very cost effective, um, but they do have a particular look to them. And so we took one of the schemes, 7A, and we put masonry on the back of it. And we used a contrasting color masonry. Um, and I'll point that out as we go. And then what I'm calling live model views is I, what I did last time, I'll do the same thing. I have all of these schemes that you're gonna see. Um, and I can move them around if anybody wants to kind of zoom in on a particular area or look at a particular thing. And we can, we can look at that. Now there's a couple of different colors and so forth on these models, but this is really just a design. Um, we've shown some materials on here, like the panels and the bricks and so forth, but we could change that. What we're really more interested in is what the shape and the design of the overall building is. And if you would like, during this model view, I can shut the colors off if you just want to look at it in black and white. We can do that. Okay, so floor plan is starting to look a little bit more like a floor plan and less like a diagram. We've, we've taken the color off, but I'm hoping that you'll still be able to see things. So after looking uh, what we talked about, we turned the, the meeting room 90 degrees. We also talked about it not sticking out too far um, and kind of hiding the entrance in a, in a recess. And so we pushed it back. Um, but after looking at the, at the arrangement and the roof and so forth, it started to get kind of complicated in the way that it engaged with the taller portion. And so we just lined it up, and we'll show that to you in the model. It's really one of those things where you're looking at things in plan, and they seem like they make sense. So you look at them in model, and all of a sudden this makes a little bit more sense. And I think you'll see it's, it's just simpler. It's going to be easier to build. It's going to be cheaper. And it just, I think, looks a little nicer. Um, so ways out, and this is potentially where a retaining wall might be. Um, and that's just sketched on there, and things could change. But again. This is the lower floor, and so we're below grade. And so this rear wall back here, this would be the retaining wall that retains the soil because there's no windows in this rear wall. It's just soil back there. Okay, you go up one floor. So there's the roof over the, uh, the meeting room one you can see. The roof is super simple. And in this one we're showing the hip roof because they're beautiful. <laughs> That's what we're showing on this one. But we do have uh, these various options in the models, and we'll show those to you and what those look like. Um, again, you'll recognize a lot of this. Um, some um, offices and so forth at the, at the top rear, um, most of the offices along the front. Uh, public counter spaces um, for the departments, trying to keep the offices on the outside walls as much as we can. There's a couple that didn't quite make it yet, um, so things are still flexible. I wouldn't want anybody to feel like Oh, gee, that's my office and I don't have a window. Uh, we're still working on it. Um, this kind of first go around is to make sure that everything fits in there, and it does. Um, and so, um, but we've got a couple of things going on. There's private offices in the departments, and then there's a kind of overall office space as well. And we'd like to get some natural light into both of those. Um, so there's a little bit of fooling around we need to do. You'll also see that we've got something different going on at the bays in the front. Last time we had two big large bays um, with panels on them. And I get the impression that folks weren't really wild about that, so we tried something a little bit different. We actually tried three, and we tried four. Four seemed to work a little nicer, and we'll show that to you when we get to the models. There isn't a, don't, maybe this is too general of you, there isn't a space, and typical, a lot of times with buildings of the size, you have an IT type, it may be a, a labeled closet, but it's usually a bigger room. Am I missing where that is in this? Um, each server IT, there's one for the school administration on this floor, and there's also one, one floor down. Okay, cool, so there, there's, you just split it that way. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That was really just for security, yeah. so that the school's yep. files could be secure from the town. Makes sense, perfect, thank you. Uh, and again, the last time we looked at this was a diagram where we just had a big blob that was one department and another department, and we're mm -hmm. shaking those things out. Large conference room here in the middle, kind of come through the coffee, coffee and coffee area to, to get access to that room. Um, we can add a door there. Um, not all the windows are shown in the front, but there are some shown in these little bays. Um, so there's a little bit more work we need to do to kind of um, get that all laid out, and of course, when you get up above the ground floor, we can have windows all the way around, and you'll see that on the model. Um, it's uh, 
we'll probably hold off on putting all the windows in until we get a little closer on what the building looks like outside um, so that we can make those things agree. Okay. So I, I, um, I haven't spent too much time on this, but there's a lot on here. So I'd say take, take a look and see uh, the next time we meet if there's things, or if you want to send me a note, if there's things that you're concerned about. But you should know that we're still kind of working on things and things are still kind of flexible. And what we decide on what the outside looks like may inform what goes on on the plan a little bit as well. But you, you have demonstrated that every space on the program has fit. Yes. Yep. So yeah, we've been able to show that our, our our plan diagram, which basically just showed a series of spaces and blobs, uh, functions and all the furniture fits in there and so forth. And it's still approximately forty three thousand square feet? The size hasn't changed, that's right. It still meets the program. Okay, so this is what we're calling scheme five. And Phil, can Option I five. Can I yeah. I know that we had talked about, I mean, I missed the last meeting, maybe. I thought we were talking about the recreation being down where the accountant's position is, the accountant being on the second floor. But I don't know if it changed. Because I thought we said that recreation is a very busy place and it would be easier to access on the first floor than the second floor. Um, I thought that discussion, Kevin, and I'll have to go back and look at my notes, is that the recreation was at the other end, and we moved them up closer to the stairs. I don't recall moving them downstairs. We, uh, we may be able to do that, but I think the accountant's department is probably too small for, us for an even swap. So that may squeeze something. No, that's fine. I just... I yeah, I... I I seem to recall moving recreation down to this end of the building closer to the stairs and the elevator because of the amount of traffic. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, that's fine. They can access it looks like from the top parking area or anyways if there's room up there. Yes, yep. So we're calling this um, option five. Um, and so this obviously takes, um, takes the meeting room and it turns it 90 degrees. Um, so that the gable faces out towards the parking lot. And then we've also pushed this back a little bit, which kind of precludes the idea of having to create a, a room that kind of pokes out in the front. Um, we've also added, because of the reorganization inside, this little additional room in the lobby. So I don't think we need, we need that extra space out the front as well. So you'll see that this one has uh, three bays on the front rather than two large ones. Um, in this, in this, we thought worked so much better than two that we tried four because <laughs> to see if it would work even better, um, and, and we think it did. But we're gonna we're gonna show that to you. This has um, so this is a lot like uh, some of the ones that we showed you. Um, I think it was scheme one and scheme four. If I'm not mistaken, the, the ones that had the gable turned, um, but it was a gable, and so we've left the gable on here. And one of the things that I think is nice about this is. Because we were able to line these up, we have kind of one long gable in this direction and one long gable in that direction. They kind of balance each other. Um, one is a little higher, obviously, and one is one is a little lower. But that kind of simplified form, I think, works a little bit nicer in the building. And then the rear portion actually pokes out on the sides a little bit, but you really can't see it from most views until you kind of get around the sides. So we put some, some smaller views from a variety of different places so you can get an idea about what it might look like um, coming up the street. And you can see the bazelle in the background. So the, the ridge of this portion of the building won't be as tall as the ridge of the bazelle. I think you can see that. Um, but the ridge of the main portion of the building will be taller than, than the bazelle, given, given the overall height of the building. So you're kind of standing down at the end of School Street now, looking, this is the green. You're kind of looking across the green. Um, and we've got cars parked, for the most part, really just in front of the building rather than all over the place, just because it kind of all those cars kind of bought everything down. So we really just have a couple of rows of cars and give you an idea. So coming up the street a little bit more in the neighbor's yard, looking across, um, gives you an idea about that, that stepping up idea. And so we'll probably end up with some doors in here, which is why that retaining wall was in, so that we could get a door coming out of the, the side of the building there, um, unless we end up changing the plan. And can you remind me, Phil, the perpendicular dark panels there on the uh, meeting 
Uh, no, actually. Oh, these are, these, yes. those are just window indications. Oh, they haven't okay. really been designed. In, in, um, in some, there's some other schemes, we've, I think, articulated them a little bit more. But um, this is, these are really preliminary s sketches. Sure. Um, 20 years ago, I would have done these by hand on trace paper and, and copied them and pinned them up here on a board for you to take a look at. Um, so these are very preliminary sketches, but now that we have this background put in there, we can take this preliminary model and kind of stick it in there. We'll put some colors on it, it's pretty quick, but it's not really done. All the detail isn't really there. Um, and so there's additional study that needs to happen in order to go into that. So you can see the rear portion of the building um, has these panels on it we're talking about. So they're very cost effective, the kind of construction up until you get to the, to the brick portion is almost exactly the same. And then instead of having a mason go in there and lay up all the brick, they, they just put up the panels. And the panels go up much quicker. They weigh a lot less. They're cheaper to ship. Um, they just cost less to put them on. So it looks cheap. They're very, they're very good. I'm not a big fan of that. It looks incomplete to me. OK. So we'll keep that in mind. Well, I, I can also bring some photographs and show you what, uh, what, we've, what we've done in some other places and what they look like installed. Yeah, I've seen them in, in Boston, and they don't look they don't look all that nice. Uh, so. Okay. Uh, this is a view from the kind of rear parking lot, looking back towards the entrance of the second floor. So there's the Bazelle over on the right-hand side. And right between where you are and the Bazelle is where their bocce court is, and there's a tent set up there right now. <laughs> but um, we've eliminated that so you can kind of see what's going on. But that would take you right into the second floor there. Mm -hmm. So that, that center space that's kind of differentiated from the rest is the entrance. That's the entrance, yeah. that's right. Yep. And this is supposed to be like the Bazelle School? That's the right-hand side of the Bazelle, and it doesn't have the doors and windows and everything in it, but yes. Yeah. If you go right around that corner right there, there's a door in the end. And I think we talked about that the approximate distance between the two buildings was like around 34 feet? Yeah, 34, 35. So I think it gives you a little opportunity to do a little kind of plaza or patio area between those two buildings um, that could be utilized by the public and the people that work there. Okay, and we can run back through these as well if you like, but I'm gonna move on to, this is the difference between 5 and 5A. So this is 5A, we basically just, we just took the same model and we just flipped it over. I actually turned it inside out, right, and just flipped it over. Um, and it puts the meeting room over here and the entrance over there. Um, and then we did an over, overhead view so you can see what the difference is. And what the difference is, is really, really where the entrance is relative to the site. Just want folks to understand that we are entering on the side of the site, pretty much lined up in the center of the green, in the, kind of that parking area that's over on the left-hand side. Um, over here, we're lined up more in the center of the site. If you were coming in off of this driveway, for example, you'd be able to see the entrance um, in either location, but you wouldn't necessarily be looking right at it. Just wanted folks to be aware that we looked at some schemes where we, where we lined up the door here, and then the building kind of went that way originally, right? We flipped the building over, um, and, and, and the entrance comes down over here. Just want folks to be clear on where it is. We're talking about 5 up here versus 5A, which is just kind of a reminder of where we've been. What, two, two, two related questions. What's the setback on the left-hand side of the building that's closer to the, the side road? The distance between the side of the building and the road is 40 feet. Okay, and so I was just trying to visualize because and the difference in height between the auditorium type room versus the three foot the three story wall. What would be the difference? You're, if you're 40 feet from the road in 5A and 5, how tall is that wall 40 feet in? That's about, that's about 18 feet. And the other one's going to be about 30? This one, um, 42. It's 42. 42. It's okay. 14 so it would be about 17 feet tall. Okay. So just, just visually try and see if you're looking at it kind of more from that angle, how high is that wall next, closest to the street? Yes, and if you'd like, when we get to the, the model where I can turn it around, I'll yeah. try to swing it around there and show you Perfect. what that looks like. Okay. Thank you. And that's 40 feet from the way line, not the actual paved. From the property line. Yeah, from yeah. the property okay. line, which is good off, off center one bit. And when you say 40 feet, you're talking about the edge. Face, face. You're not talking about the top of the roof. No, you're talking about 40 feet in 
in Coming from the property line Park to line. the wall. All right. And then he talked about the height. Yep. So the height of that building <coughs> on, the, on five, okay, uh, we measured it. And then with the addition of the gable roof. Yeah, it's another 10 or 12 feet. Another 10 to 12 feet. Right. Okay. Yep. It really depends on the, on the roof pitch. Right now, you can probably see um, that what we are looking at is a roof pitch that's similar to what's happening at the Pazell. I mean, that's the idea. Um, that slope, that kind of low pitch, is yep. not too different than what goes on over at the high school. They don't really have a slope roof. They have a, a fence up there that's kind of designed like a roof, right? I'm just going to make a comment that go back, if you could go back to one. <clears throat> This flip that you did yes. is really kind of nice. <laughs> and because I liked what you just said in that it, it sort of centers it, uh, looks more centered on the lot. Um, from going through all these drawings, I just, with the um, extension of the conference room, on the left side, just the building just seemed a little unbalanced to me with relation to the lot. But this way, at least if you're coming down Middlesex Ave, it looks a little more proportioned and more centered. You are going to have tall over here on School Street. And, and that was, that was the issue that we had, yeah, we had talked about stepping up from School Street, right. so it wasn't such a dramatic. Ah, oh yeah. Right. I think can you move also the front door if I if I inside? Sorry, John. No. We need to be able to get in and get into the meeting room area okay. and yeah. be able to shut down the rest of the building. Building, right. So I, I think that uh, one of the things, if we go back to the very very beginning, uh, the program of, of the parking lot here is this the student parking. Yeah, so the parking for the town hall is is, is not is not that great. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not it's not a huge demand. So I, I, I don't think the, the entrance, be, other than visual from the green, uh, will will be affected at all by parking. I don't think anyone's gonna have a problem parking and walking or <coughs> stuff something like that. You're gonna know, have no trouble with parking spaces. You know, if it was at one end and everyone had to walk diagonally all the way from the Fourth of July building. It would be one thing, but I, I, that's not how the program was laid out. You know, student parking is is up by the front of the school. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think if I lived on School Street, I'd rather an 18 foot yeah. high structure adjacent from my home than 42 mm -hmm. feet plus. Yeah, whatever. Okay. That's what, that's what and I think that's what steered us in that direction. Right, the 54 anyway. coming out to the 54, right? Yeah, we can, yeah. But we can show so, you some views. So the way it kind of went in. Like from the road, you're at 100 percent. If you're the neighbor, and you're, if you're on that side street, five looks much more appealing. But from the functionality of the town hall, five A seems that the the appeal of having it straight in that way makes a whole lot of sense. So there's there's pro, there pros and cons to both, for sure. Which is why we wanted to point it out because somebody may put their hand up at some point and say, "How come you didn't do it like this?" Mm -hmm. And we can say we had that discussion. The other thing too is um, on the bump outs. On the one on the left, you only has two windows, but the other two have three. Why? Um, <laughs> we, we could certainly fix that. We could, we could slide both of these over and have two and two, and then a little bit more space down the end, and maybe put a couple of windows okay. down the end. Okay. That, it, that's great feedback. And if yeah. you like the three versus the, versus the four I'm going to show you, or the two that we've shown you in okay. the past, and, but you'd like us to look at that, yeah, we, can do, we, can go, I, I, we can go do that. It just bugs me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's, a, it's an OCD <laughs> test. <Yeah. laughs> Does it look better on this one? <laughs> okay. Of course. Okay. So this is what we're calling six. Now six is similar. Um, we've articulated these windows a little bit more. And again, that's just one idea about how those windows might look. That could, that could vary. But the idea is they relate like a little bit more to what's going on over here. Um, this one has a hip roof on it, with kind of a kind of a oversized cornice. One of the things that's going on over at the school 
is that you have these kind of uh, this kind of chunky massing in terms of the way that the the entrances are right fat stocky columns very kind of simplified <coughs> um, this kind of a simplified architrave it's kind of chunky uh -huh. right um, and that's kind of one of the things that we picked up from that and on this so you can see this got kind of a big um, overhang um, it provides a little bit you can see a little bit of shading it's a little hard to see but there's the shadow line it provides a little bit of shading on windows which helps a little bit with HVAC um, and this one obviously has uh, four uh, with an equal number of windows between in this case um, and there's a variety of different ways to do that but one of the things that we did is kind of hold off this side a little bit and kind of played up the entrance a little bit um, with an element that kind of rides up through the building that would appear in the offices okay and again this one has a different color on it which is this kind of gray color that was designed to kind of match the roof because in this one, I think we're showing, in this one and the next one, I think we're showing metal roof on, roofing on the air, whereas the first one we showed asphalt shingle. Um, but you'll get a little bit more wear and tear out of a metal roof, but it costs more money. Um, and it's interesting to look at it like this, because when, you, when you're when you at this point, you, you can get a glimpse of this roof, um, but when you get up a little closer, you won't be able to tell the difference between that roof and a flat roof. Uh, and, and based so on that, we did the next two... The next scheme has got a flat roof on it. So it, it, th this version has the panels essentially similar to the high school that they look like it's an angled roof, but behind those panels it's it's flat. Is that the intention? no? This has this has a, this a real pitch. It could be that way, and that would it wouldn't look much different. What goes on at the what goes on at the school is that they they come down and then there's a vertical wall on, so they don't actually come up and engage the edge of the roof. They come okay. down and, and then they're flat. Uh, and if you get far enough away, they don't actually touch the roof, they float. <laughs> yeah, okay. So this is an actual pitch roof. Okay. Does a metal roof, an entire building with a metal roof, what are some of the cons about it? Is it noisy? No. You won't hear it inside at all. Now, if you had an old cabin where just three quarter inches of wood boots between you and the metal roof, you'd hear that. But there's so much insulation up on that roof and mm -hmm. acoustical ceiling tile and everything. No, okay. you, you won't hear anything. When, when, you, when you go in and you shut the door, it'll be like a refrigerator. You won't hear it. How about in, in the winter time, if there's icing up there, would it slide off it, e easily? Uh, I mean, I it, wouldn't want anybody down below to get. It could. Get you're hit. right. Metal roofing does have to have uh, does have to have snow guards or rails on there to prevent slides off. And we do have a sidewalk in here, so it maybe that's maybe a good reason not to put one on. And, and what are we talking uh, lifespan between an asphalt shingle roof and a metal roof? An asphalt shingle roof, uh, assuming it's one of those laminated, what they call architectural shingles, um, those are those are good. They, I mean, some of them give lifetime warranties, and it's not really worth anything um, because they're prorated. Yeah. Um, but they're probably good for between 30 and 50 years okay. if they're maintained well. No problem. You get 75 years out of a pre-finished metal roof. If you did something like a solid copper roof, you get 100 years out of it. But it's just, it's just more and more money. <laughs> so you could put a couple of asphalt shingle roofs on there over the life. In other words, if you're going to get 50 years out of an asphalt shingle roof and you're going to do two of them, you, yeah, you'd still get a bunch of money <laughs> back in your pocket for not doing a copper roof. Is there any benefit to doing a combination of asphalt with maybe you know, going up so many feet with the um, metal? If you were concerned about things, like sometimes you'll see like a metal edge on a, mm -hmm. on a roof like at a house or something. Mm -hmm. And that's to help prevent ice damming. Um, but a building like this, the likelihood of ice damming is almost nil. Okay. Ice damming is caused by heat escaping through the, build, through okay. the roof, right? And this will be so well insulated the ice and water shield and everything that we'll put on there that it would be unlikely that that would happen at all. Okay, so we put a darker color on this one. Um, again, just to kind of pick up on the color of the roof, but colors are doesn't really matter. Now, rather than panels like we had on the other one, which is like a cementitious that happens around the backside of this building, this is a curtain wall system. So if you look over at the school, you've got 
um, kind of a grid like this, and then there's glass, and then there might be um, uh, spandrel glass in some cases, where the, it's glass that you can't see through, it's opaque, and then there are metal panels that match the windows themselves uh, in other places, and that's what we're looking at here. So this is a curtain wall system, and that's, most, that's not the cementitious panels that we were showing on the back side of the building. This, this is the idea here, this is curtain wall. They're just lines on a drawing like this, I know, but that's kind of what the idea is here, is that we're trying to pick up on what's going on over at the school. And a couple other views of, of six. So you can see, depending on where you're standing, um, the hip roof almost goes away here. Right? You can still see it when you're further out. The hip roof, hip roof makes it seem small, too. Yes. The other. the other thing that this helps here, I think, is the overhang. Yeah. That large overhang and then the shadow underneath it helps to pull the visual mm -hmm. look of the building down a little bit as well. In the rear view, the, why is the hip roof so much lower towards the, the top of the wall? It looks like it's, it looks like the hip roof, the hip is actually set towards the front of the building, not centered over the building. It is. That's ah. exactly right. Yep. Okay. It's just on the front. And so on, on the, in this, in this case, on, on the back half, it's a flat roof? Or it's well, a basically, yeah. yeah it's, ah. It'll be pitched like you've got up at your school. But yeah. there's, the, there's the hip roof there, and then that roof. Yeah. So you're seeing it kind of disappearing in perspective. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then this is this is seven. And this got some similarities to the other one. Um, but we pulled the hip roof down onto the lower section as well. Um, the colors that we picked up this kind of uh, I don't know what you call that kind of a putty limestone color. Uh, we tried to we try to make it look like it is over at the school, um, and I think we got pretty close. I mean, the way it shows on this monitor and the way I see on my screen is pretty close. I went over there today on the way in just to see. Um, that's almost the, the exact same color as your windows and everything you have over at the school. So from one side of the street to the other, you'd have that same kind of limestone putty color. Now, some of the other differences are, this is actually showing the flat roof in the front. Still has an overhang because that overhang in the shadow, I think, helps to pull down the overall size of the building, but because you really can't see much of the hip roof there. The question is, uh, do you want to bother? <laughs> um, now you certainly could. You could do hip roof, hip roof here as well. So I, I didn't draw that option, but I'm happy to do it. But it's a little bit of the last one and a little bit of this one. Uh, the other thing we did is, is that we also added a little bit of overhang. It's a subtlety to these four tall elements here on the front of the building, which I think helps to provide a little additional shading. And it also helps to give them a little bit of a cap that kind of corresponds to what's going on in the building so that they're all speaking the same language even though they're made out of different materials. I think you just answered this with the last drawing. So all the HVAC and other equipment is in the back of the building. So from the front of it, you wouldn't need one of those facades to hide. Exactly right. Exactly right. We'll park everything in the back over the storage rooms and so forth. So all, anything that's up there making noise, if you can even hear it, you'd have to go into a storage room in order to be able to I and mean, there's no risk for, I know a lot of commercial buildings have flat roofs. I, as a homeowner, I would think flat roof means, you know, collapsing roof <laughs> from the weight of the <laughs> yeah, snow. <laughs> no, you'll be okay. You, I mean, and, and, it's, and the building code uh, requires us to design a roof to support that load. Um, I don't know if you remember about 10, 15 years ago, we had these huge storms that snowed like a foot a week for months and it never warmed up. People had three, four, or five feet of snow on their roof and they were calling us. Hey, uh, you, you don't, may not remember, you, you designed a building for us like 10 years ago and there's like five feet of, you know, um, yeah, you're okay. It'll, it'll take the load. You don't have to go up there with a snowblower or, or a rake and scrape it off. You'll be okay. George, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not here. I'm, he's not here. I can volunteer him, yeah. right? Now, it's not Alaska, so if we had 10 feet, yeah. you know, it's a different phone call. So to the point about the um, air conditioning units and the air handling and so on, I know, um, Several years ago now, uh, the public safety building, when that was built in 2000, there were uh, units up on top of um, the building and the, the neighbors on Park Street um, were uh, 
contacted the office because they were hearing the noise of the uh, AC mm -hmm. unit when it kicked on, and ultimately we wound up having to go to town meeting and change out the the system um, for something else. So these the AC is, it, is that, that going to be an issue for the people on School Street or? I, I don't think it is because our roof is going to be higher than their second floors. Um, so that sound is going to broadcast up for the most part. But that w is a conversation that we will have in design development with, okay. the, with the mechanical engineers. And if we do need to um, add something around the back, um, an acoustical treatment, um, we certainly could. Sometimes we put them up because they, they look good, this kind of fence thing, which is what you have over at the school. Mm, right. um, but that may also have some acoustic properties to it as well. They could be lined with acoustical blankets that kind of absorb sound. I, I don't know what goes on at, over at the school, but the, you certainly could do something like that if, 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 if the mechanical engineers believe it would be an issue. Stuff is generally quieter than it was in the past, but we are moving a lot of air. I'm not suggesting it's a now thing, but potentially with a flat roof, depending on technology and cost, could that potentially facilitate solar at the right angle to get to the right rays to get the best yes. efficiency? Yep. Would that roof be supportive of the extra weight of a solar system? Yes, it's a code so, requirement. Okay, well, fantastic. I'm glad that goes that way. Um, so that would be one advantage of that as opposed to the other two options. Yeah. would be the, someday when we might sure. want to, we could have the option. So the code requirement is that if you have self-facing roofs or roofs that can support a, a photovoltaic array system, at some point, you need to design the structure to be able to support that now so that if somebody decides to add it in the future, they don't have to hear that they want to. And the big problem is not the weight of them. It's uh, wind load. Mm. Because they sit up off the roof a little bit, the wind gets under them. And it's, so it's suction. You know, rip your roof off. Yes. So that's what we need to design for. And that's a code requirement. Okay. Thank you. They're pretty light, actually. Okay. So okay, this one, again, question flat roof up here, yeah. and that could have a hip on it just like this. Mm -hmm. So in this picture right here with the hip roof um, there, I see just the front door. I see the, the entry right there. Yep. But when I look at this option 7 here, it looks like, does, is that an indentation? Yes. Of, of the pass through to that larger. Yep, that's a portion of the lobby that's one story. Yep. Okay, so that so that is an indentation in there, and then that is the front door right there. Yep. I like the idea of the hip roof on both. Like John wants the windows to be. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think you're right. I, I, yeah. I um, it was too late to change it, Kevin, but I agree with you. Um, I. If I had if I had the opportunity to do a 7B, that's what I would have done, yeah. is to put a hip roof on both of those, because I think it would look nice. Yeah. I think a 7 scheme, the elevations and the roof lines are less brutal. I don't want to say brutal. Like, no, that's, a, that's an OK word. <laughs> than, than the other ones, and, and I think it, it, it's, it just looks nicer. It's more pleasing to the eye. And if I was a neighbor there, I'd, I'd, probably rather see scheme seven or variation of scheme seven. And, and I, I hear what you're saying, Kevin, but the, the, the hip roof on the one at the lower elevation, but then having flat roof on top, just does lower the whole height of the building. And so in some ways it does reduce the, yeah. the overall impact of the space around it by having a flat roof instead of, if I can, I can appreciate having them together, but by having the hip on the one that's lower, it brings it up a little bit, but it's not still to the height of the other building, the other part of the building and, and the rest stays flatter. Yep. And the overhang works. It gives you that visual effect. Yeah, I think it does help. Yeah. And, and the, uh, as I recall, uh, the, the swing was flat, right? Yep. Yeah, but yeah. It, this just would, you know, we, we're trying to get the same color scheme type of look at, as the high school. Right. And I think with the, with the two roofs, and I certainly understand what you're saying, we're matching it up. Yeah. Know? Okay. I don't. I don't disagree. I think they I, could I both work. Maybe if we did a, a mansard yeah. or something like that. But if we don't need it, if that works, you know, why spend the dough on it? it this is a. It's a, it's a good looking design. 
Right. If, you, if you had the hip room from the front, you sell it flat in the back. You could, sell, you could eventually put solar panels yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. Is seven the one in one soil likes the best? Say that again? Is seven the one that one's gravitating to? I mean, otherwise, it does, I don't necessarily it does match the I take a vote here, but we can. I'm not, I'm not asking for yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah. trying to gauge. I mean, I, for me, yeah, if we want to go around the horn here, I think seven is the nicer of the eight. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say it's not to, to the prior point. The, the the four looks cool on the front of the front side of it, but then on 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 either side of the four, there's four windows on one side and two on the other. So for counting windows. <laughs> and it sounds like we might be. <laughs> we'll have to figure it out in plan. Because um, there's this kind of structural grid in yeah. there, too, that we're kind of following oh, along. And, they, and of course, you know, we're not slaves to it, but it makes it more effective and efficient mm -hmm. if we can do it. So we'll, we'll yeah. look at that again. Um, yeah, the kind of overall, we've got a little bit more going on here with the entrance and everything as well. But you're kind of talking about what's left over there and what's left over yeah. there on the other. Yeah. All right, we'll take a look at that. Yeah. Symmetry. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We just want to make sure, we want to pull out, right right now, one of the ideas of four, um, because once we tried three, it looked pretty good, and we tried four, it seemed to make sense, because on, on, on the first two levels, there's four offices across the front of the building. And so it allows us to get one in each office, mm -hmm. right? Well, and by definition, with the entrance hall, you're, you're going to be asymmetrical. So the question is then, do you want to have the four on the one side, or should the four be on the other side and two next to the entrance hall? Because you're already asymmetrical with the ent entrance hall, and maybe that balances it. Yes, because out. it's more of a kind of a, a kind of a positive and negative balance, mm -hmm. um, and I may, I may try to balance it mm -hmm. equal on either side, and you, you might not like it, yeah. right? But we'll look at it. Yeah. It's almost like five, even though it's you know two windows, yeah. three and three. You have yeah. the entrance way that's as, that makes that left side equal to the middle and to the right side on, on the three on number five yes and and, and this one is and that's kind of and that's negative space too the shadow is not really as dark as but that's more negative space and this is positive space which you can always is. add a little more, more building if you want to let's <laughs> <laughs> go down another 30 40 feet and fix it <laughs> hmm. okay and then <coughs> the other views of seven. And so the seven B that I told you about, and what we did is because uh, these panels um, wasn't getting warm and fuzzy for everybody. And so what we did is we, we tried to put we put a masonry back here, but it's a but it's a contrasting color. The idea is is that it's that same kind of warm tone, and the pattern's a little funky. Sorry about that. It's just. Sometimes the patterns just get, I mean, you can see this little dark spot that repeats on the brick. And the same kind of thing happened on the brown brick, but it's, the idea was that it's the same color, but it's some looks, kind of masonry. Looks like the cinder blocks on my grandfather's garage. It's, yeah, I'm sorry, it looks like that. It's not <laughs> the idea. I, 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 it's it's cinder block. It's not, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not cinder block, no. <laughs> is, is there a you reason why, why Phil, you didn't just make the back brick the same color as the front brick? Um, I mean, a brick is a brick. Uh, you're right. Um, a brick is a brick, but one of the things that we were trying to express was, and for a couple of different reasons, was that the building is kind of broken down in terms of its overall scheme and idea, and for the most part we have more storage and support spaces across the back and more offices along in the front. Um, the front is kind of a, th a three-story structure, and the back appears to be a two, uh, and then we think that the contrasting color we think will accentuate and kind of let the front part stand out a little bit more and not look as large. It'll help to break it down because it's more of a cluster of buildings rather than one big red brick chunk. Mm -hmm. I can put red brick on the back and, and kind of we can do a side by side if you'd like to see it. We can do that. I grew the brick myself. Just I would say just consider the neighbors who live there who have to look at it. Something traditional would be better for them. Yeah. They're going to come around the corner and see a different color. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to come around the corner and see the right brick. I mean, I, I get what you're saying, but it, to Kevin's comment, uh, all, all of the schemes with the grounds in the back make it look like it's unfinished. Like, okay, we ran out of money, we didn't have enough money to do the right brick in the back. Well, that's a failure in the modeling that we did. 
You don't blame Revit? <laughs> no, no, that's, what that's us. Revit's just, <laughs> Revit's just a tool, but we'll, we'll fix it. <laughs> Take another look. Yeah, I think the, uh, I would agree with the continuity as well. If I were a neighbor living on School Street, I think I would kind of want the, the brick following all around um, rather than the... I'd like to show you the... Uh, yeah, please. The live model, the model that we can turn around, and I think it. Part of I'm struggling to visualize it in a real world scenario where we see a building that looks similar to that, and you can and you can see pictures or whatever of, of the exact example where you can see that mm -hmm. edge, and does it look unfinished or does it look like it's you're describing three separate buildings that are kind of working together? Phil, tell the truth. You just don't want to draw all those little squares. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I, if I if I really didn't want to draw the squares, I'm sure I could get somebody to help me. So we could so we could turn this thing around. All right. Um, so people seem to kind of like seven. So I'm going to turn on seven. strikes me with, with the... Does that help to shut off the trees? In the parking lot? <laughs> with, with the um, contrast in the back there and those panels, and maybe it's because of the, the fact that they're so light, it almost <coughs> suggests to me that the, the front is more of a, perhaps to some measure, traditional, and then you're changing Sorry. to a modernistic on the back side. Uh, which I'm not sure works. Looks like an addition. It looks like it, yeah, it looks like an addition was put on. But some, but sometimes that contrast works really well. But sometimes it looks like an addition. I can't right. figure out which one it is in this scenario. I mean, you do have a mixture in the in the high school, you know, um, and and also in the middle school. If you take a look, you, there's different different types of uh, bricks in, in it. And, yeah. uh, but at least it's, it conforms all around the entire building. Yes, yeah, so we, try, we try to pick a brick that was, I mean, I don't have an endless yeah. amount of different colors that I can pick. We try to pick one that was sympathetic to the other color that we were looking at. It's al almost like if you just took one or two out of the selection on the left and brought them mm -hmm. into the selection on the right, it would look like they were, it was built all together. And it was intentional as opposed to an addition. And again, I'm not the color Actually, wizard. The so. color of the panels. You, know, you just have the dark and the light. If you got darker panels, it would blend more. There it is without color on it. Perfect. Mm. We can paint it white. I just felt what would help us is if you were to do a mock up with a, a carrying the brick all the way around. Sure. And it may be very apparent to us that the, the two different materials might make the building look smaller to us as opposed to if we look at it as an all brick building, it just made it look large, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I also think you should have views coming down School Street. I mean, you have a you know, the biggest direct impact is going to be the residents on School Street. Mm -hmm. So it has to be, it, it can't look like the back of a building.
the street just a little bit. Future, I'm just thinking too. If the Vizel doesn't exist, um, can you do a mock-up without the Vizel there too? Or can you turn the Vizel on? Um, I don't know if I have the Vizel on. I might be able to turn off. If you can't do it tonight, I'm just thinking that may be something to look at next time. Okay. Huh? That's, 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 that's the whole neighborhood. That's going to hurt the tax base right there. He's got the insurance. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if this is on a separate. Just move the thought. It's also kind of how many, how many people are going to come in each entrance. If that back entrance is used a lot, then the fact that it's a different sort of facade completely from the middle okay. to the front entrance. And you can let the camera back up on Soul Street again. More parking. You want it to look nice. Yeah. yeah. So this is right up at the bend in the road? modern in ways that are good or bad depending on your opinion of modern. On the edge of the historic district. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Huh? Gotta <laughs> 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 try. <laughs> yeah, you have that in red brick? We know you know we know there's a file in there. I, no, I don't. <laughs> I mean you know, that was an extra choice <laughs> <20 bucks. laughs> <laughs> Are there any other views that people wanted to see? Mm -hmm. You want to look, take a closer look at the, something here. I think the, it just needs to be the entrance. A bit. Is it going to be a, an awning for the back entrance? Uh, that is recessed in there. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. The door's kind of pulled in, oh, so, you, so you're yeah, covered. And we did a, a cover over the front door mm -hmm. here as well. In either, in either case, it may make sense to have the um, cornice come around the whole roof line. It's, it's interesting, it's a very interesting detail in the front, but then you can just get the sheer wall on the back without the overhang. So maybe that unifies the building as well by bringing that around the whole, the whole roof line, um, regardless of what happens below it, but at least in terms of having it look like, as opposed to an addition, one building built at one time, if they share the roof line. Sure. Um, no, I see, yeah, I see what you mean. We, we were, I mean, the intent was, and I guess we didn't pull it off, is to have kind of one mass, mm. two mass, yeah. third mass in the back. Makes sense. To help break the thing down. Yeah. Um, well, because you, get, folks you can have brick columns, like you did in the front with the panels along the back, and. That would add a little bit of brick, but it won't be all brick. Yeah. I think the idea was a very good one to make it look that way, but, but there's a way to do that and I think carry the themes from the front to the back without repeating the entire front to back. Okay. Mm -hmm. and we're going to we'll yeah. look at that. Yeah. We'll look at making it all the same because that's what you've asked, and then we'll, make, we'll try a couple of other options. Well, I, I, I thought that we, we looked at it all the same uh, in the last meeting. Well, we straighten up back. Yeah, and we, 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 we actually, everyone wanted to straighten up the back and not put as much detail on okay. the back. So the front was more presentable. Exactly. But I think you, I think you are onto something that some of the elements should be carried around the entire building so the back isn't so um, cold storage -y. Brutal is the kind of word you used earlier. And it's not, not brutal. It's not like City Hall in Boston. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, I, I, I like. I never thought I'd like a flat roof. I think maybe like a flat roof to me. So. so 
this is from the, you can see this, the 4th of July building over there on the, on the right. So we're kind of standing right next to that building looking across the parking lot. Yeah. This keeps the elevation down, which I think is huge for us. Yeah. You, uh, you, so you don't really have any canopy coming out from the front door, just a little? Yeah. Uh, so that, this, that piece up in the top. Yes. Yeah, so it's it's recessed in. Yeah. Right? And then there's a canopy over it. So you when you get in close to that door, see that door is three feet wide? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is set back what is that? Good. Four feet? Yeah. Five feet? What's the depth of the canopy? And then the canopy sticks out another five, six feet. Okay, that's good. So you've got pretty good coverage in there. Yes. Okay. And, and the sidewalk will connect to the ground. There was ver one version, I think, in one of your prior models that had a, uh, what do you call it, a hip roof, I guess, uh, on that, right? Yeah, like a vegetable. Yeah, we did have, um, we did, on one of them, we built out something in here. Oh, that's right. right. The whole front here. Oh, you were talking about a glass. We we're going to put a big glass box in here. Glass right? box yeah. in there. But what we ended up doing was adding a little bit of, when we reorganized this section, we added a little bit more square footage in the lobby. So I think adding a bunch of extra square footage out here is just going to increase the cost. Not that we need it because we push this back. This doesn't stick out as far as Right. Is so there any way to kind of emphasize the front the door? I mean, uh, uh, can I see it again from head on the front door? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're basically talking a, a width there of what maybe two double doors, or just two, yeah. two single doors. Yeah. Well, that's probably. I think that's probably about ten feet wide. Ten feet wide. Yeah. Right. And then. I mean, I, I. So this recess runs up in here, and then that is recessed as well. Right. So we are trying to herald that entrance mm -hmm. so that you can see it even over the roof of this building. Mm -hmm. So if, just as a thought, if the, your piece that comes out was lowered to over the, the front door and came out maybe with a couple of columns um, to, you know, uh, so when you come out, you're not really outside with no coverage whatsoever give it a little bit of a pop to uh, to the front entrance way. Um, we can take a look at that. Bring out an overhang maybe. Yeah, what I'm saying is, yep, you're talking go about, up to here. You're talking about lowering this. Lower that, coming out, out, and then, you know, just a couple of columns on each side yep. uh, to kind of give it a, the, this is, this is the main entrance of the town hall. Right, I think it will read like that. And again, what we were trying to do is we're trying to take advantage of this negative space in there, right. mm -hmm. opposed to the positive spaces in those. Mm -hmm. I think that really will be. So in other words, rather than having a little bump right here, we have a, a full building engagement that says entrance is what we're trying to do. And I think that um, may do more than an entrance that just sits over the front. But mm -hmm. we, could take a, we could take a peek at that, at what a That's canopy a, would look like. Diane, if you, if you lowered it, um, you're going to lose space for signage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good to have a right job. Yeah. Yeah. The only, I, I like the idea of it extending a little further out, potentially, but the only question I have is if, if that's the only place there are columns, it, does it create the, the sense of an entrance or does it create the sense of something that would, doesn't match the rest yeah. of the design? Mm -hmm. Right. It, it'd be one or the other. I, I don't know which it would be, but... So what, what, would it be safe to say that the, the, the committee wants the entrance a little more defined? Would that be? I would. I would it's agree. my opinion. I would agree too. Um, I just, you know. Yeah. It, well, it's kind of blocky and preliminary. So mm -hmm. yeah, we'll we'll take a look at it. What's the what's the yeah? So so if it extended just to the depth of the meeting room, not, not the roof of the the hip roof of the uh, the conference room, assembly room. Into that slot. But into that depth. Over here. Yes. No. No. So if you, if you turn to ninety degrees, so you're looking at it parallel to the wall of the building. So if that overhang came forward another six or eight feet, 
however, so you, however far so to the edge of that front wall of the other building. So you bring out a 16 foot with the roof in a couple columns. No, I don't know. Yeah. Four yeah. columns. We can, that'll, that'll, maybe. I know what you mean. Let's take, okay. take a look. Okay. Thank you. So once, once someone enters the uh, doors there, is there kind of an interior set of doors similar to the high yes. school that you have to get through two sets of doors? That's a code requirement. Oh, it is? Okay. Energy code requirement. <laughs> are, are we all thinking about, uh, especially the entrance way there with some sort of um, bulletproof glass? We are not. Um, no. Uh, I know we did it to the high school just for the we typically, typically all the glass in the building would be tempered so that if somebody just picked up a rock and threw it, it would bounce off. Mm -hmm. um, but not if you really worked at it. But bullet resistant would add a huge cost. Yeah. Not to all the windows. I'm talking about the entrance way. So I'm not but, but the entrance is, uh, a school is locked. You're talking about hardening it for uh, security town reasons? Hall is open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the challenge. I mean, mm. That's right. You have a lot of unless you had somebody there monitoring, monitoring people, it, yeah. letting them in. It doesn't make sense mm. to fortify the entrance. Yeah, because it's going to be open. Yeah, we do police stations, and sometimes we'll harden the lobby with a bullet-resistant glass window, yeah. mm -hmm. so that if anybody gets into the lobby and then they get upset, they can't get out of that lobby or at the people behind them. But you're really just hardening the that small spot. It doesn't really provide any protection elsewhere in the building. I would agree, Tony. If it was a school, I would agree with you. Yeah. I think the protective glass might come into effect. So where there's the open, where the public comes to the, to you know, to the desk. Yeah. And and you have, kind of like the bank teller area there. Right. Yeah. You yeah. Have protective you glass there. Yeah. Because I'm sure that their door will be locked unless they're having a meeting and they have to unlock it for the person coming in. Sure. To their little conference area, but that's where I would. Maybe figure you put protective glass. We've 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 done it in the town offices that we've done. We've done it uh, rarely. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of times on the collector's office because they don't want anybody well, that's what popping over the counter, yeah, right? Can we yeah. maybe explore that and just have that as an option? Sure. Yeah, like yeah. as an alacrity. We certainly can. We certainly can put it in the yeah. estimate, okay. and you guys can decide whether you want to pursue it. Yeah. But you could always do it as an ad alternate, right? Well, I mean, right now, we're just looking at, you know, that, that overall cost picture. Correct. And, you know, we're not going there getting ready to bid. Yeah. We're talking about glazing and above counters in town offices now. For the most part, we're talking about um, COVID response um, rather than security. Well, to answer Dan's question, I would say I think a little more work on the front entry to define it a little bit more. Sure, we're going to we're going to do a little bit more work on the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I mean, but, we're but under, we're going to be getting under some time timelines here, and right. I don't want to hold things up yeah. too too much here. But but that's kind of a, that's kind of another question. The next time we're scheduled to meet is a public meeting, right? Yeah, and, right. Yeah. Uh, would you like me to? try things and then you get to see them at the same time the public does? Mm. <laughs> or do you want to do you want to stick with one or two of these at this point and we could still be working in the in do you want us schedule I, 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 I something think that the chairman the real chairman the real chairman's intent was to uh, was to run a, was to run a roof right. of the Roman house in the town hall let them uh, let the public see the progress as we're, we are, which would be today's meeting, mm -hmm. and to uh, uh, walk through this building. If that was his intent of uh, that meeting on the 13th. And th I mean, there's no reason why we can't meet afterwards and, and keep developing. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like we did at the senior center, we had a we had public participation, and then we had a meeting uh, an hour later. Mm -hmm. We had public participation at five. Uh, public information at five, and then at six we had uh, we had a regular meeting. So, when when the public comes in for that informational meeting early, do we want to show a building all brick? I guess is my first question. 
we, we all seem to be on that wavelength of not caring, you know, not liking that two-tone effect or looking unfinished there in the back and, and everything. And I, I think the second point is that everybody likes the hip roof for the um, conference room. How'd you do I that? The hip roof both. I, I do both, yeah. Look at that. You bought the plug-in online? <laughs> <laughs> no, I typically wouldn't want to take the time when we were. It, you guys were talking, and so I took a minute. Okay. The question I have about the entrance, um, getting back to how it would look differently with columns there, I don't know if I necessarily like that idea. I like the way it is now. But if you put columns, coming out into the sidewalk. And I know you have to make everything ADA compliant and everything else, but you can have columns and if you have people coming in, you know, right now it's open and they can, you know, they can come in from the grass area or even, but putting the columns in, you're kind of tightening it up. I, I personally think <laughs> having columns, it's gonna look like a school drop off. Yeah, I don't like I, I like the way it is, other than I like a hip roof, but that's how, how far could you come out without doing any supports at the end of an overhang? Well, obviously, there's anything you can do anything with, more. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> pra pra right. practically, um, another, another few feet or another I, ten another, feet? Co another couple of feet, but the, the more I come out, the bigger it needs to get, yeah. right? Yeah, it, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's kind of and elegant, then, right? Yeah. And if I go much further, it's going to get a little chunky. And the other concern I would have coming out father and I'm not saying the kitchen woman can do it, but someone might want to get a ladder and jump up there and say, hey, we won the championship, and, you know. Now, now that you've said it, they will try, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I only mentioned it because I looked today again at the middle school and the high school, and they have the area that comes out with the columns. And you're right, it is great for drop-off, but it doesn't hinder any handicap accessibility to the building at all. I'm just, maybe Phil will be a little more creative and think about something else for the... Uh, this basically assumes that it's the same masonry as what's going on in the front of the building, which is like over at the school. So a larger block of masonry, right? That kind of beige masonry you have over there. I actually think, though, I think, I think that uh, the school committee representative is, is, is right. I think if you brought the overhang around the back, I think it might bring some continuity to it, even if you did have different colored brick. And, and you know, obviously, we can make the brick color choice anytime because um, it doesn't affect the estimate. Uh, but I do think that it might bring some continuity to the back. It, it just looks. It, it looks it looks like the back of a uh, BJ's wholesale club, and it is and it should. Right, he stabs. He goes right for the heart of He's an artist. Come on. Uh, I'm just telling you what I think it looks like. Um, but you know the, the other thing that I wanted the, the committee to look at and and give direction to Phil on. Phil, can you go back to the front? Yes. So, I mean, I, I think everyone kind of likes the bays and likes the idea of breaking up the facade in the front. What is the thought about the, 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 the bays not necessarily being, you know, curtain wall, but maybe being either limestone or, or brick or, or something else other than curtain wall? Yeah, I, I've seen that, and I... Well, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm throwing it out there. I mean, this looks fine. It will look fine. It's what's... This pattern yeah. is what you see right over at the school. That multi story window. But is it a different yeah. color than the school? Uh, or is it the same? It's the same. The idea is it's the same. Yeah. It's, it's a little darker in this yeah. rendering, but I think it's intended to try and pull the limestone out of the yeah. school. Yeah. I think that I think bringing those two together that way makes a lot of sense with the, with the colors. Because the school is beautiful. There's kind of there's two different things going on at the school, though. Um, See that? Mm -hmm. yeah, in between the windows is, is, is like a square. Okay. 
is like a that's, square. That's this right here. That's the that idea of the mirror, color, right? mirror that yeah. color. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, that's this that's material that. right okay. there. And right. is that a, a, ma a masonry or is it a stone? No, that's, that's, that's a panel. It's okay. basically it's Oh, it is a panel. It's yeah. not a stone. That's right. Yeah, I, th I think if, if we're trying to have a continuity between the spaces, mirroring mm -hmm. those that's types of things. Right at the entrance. Right. Yes. Can you come? That, right. that, that will pull the, the colors together without necessarily replicating. Mm -hmm. You don't want to replicate the school. Right, right, right. It's got its, it's, got its own identity. <laughs> it looks great. But the purpose of this, I mean, it's different. Yeah. I, 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 it was just, it was, it was a question. I, I'm, I'm happy. So also good maybe that, that can be various. So I, I will also point out this. One of the things that they did over at the school as you can see, there's contrasting colors in those chunks, right? And you don't even have to see this photograph. You'll see what they did is they tried to break the building down into smaller chunks mm -hmm. so that it didn't look as massive as yeah, it would if it was just red one red big red, red yeah, shoe it would, box. It would, yeah, it would look like, yeah. Which is what we yeah. would. Yeah, no, that, that's yeah. good. I just, it would be good the, 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 yeah. the difference around the back. I, I, I think it's okay to have a difference in the back. Yeah, we how might much? have to do that in the back where it's only two stories, but if we bring the overhang all the way around the building, mm -hmm. it, might, it might do it. Yeah. And these, two, these shipping chunks have different roof systems on yeah, as well, right? Yeah, which is interesting, yeah. <laughs> which is kind of where that, the idea of maybe having the hip over here and the flat in the back is kind of what, yeah. where this mm -hmm. comes from as well. But yeah, we'll, if you, if you we're we're going to look at that again anyway and show it to you, because <laughs> I think some of you may like it. So it's safe to say that the committee likes Scheme 7 the most. We're not going to vote on this or anything, but I, I kind of like, would give, I'd like to give. Further develop Scheme 7. I think so, yeah. yeah diff see. Different options and so forth. Yeah. Just use see this one fill some direction for next meeting. I, 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 that's, that's what this late person here is. And just a question in, in terms of the so the space between the entrance to the building and the meeting rooms. There's that little um, alcove, like yeah, yeah, it's kind of like a little hallway, I guess. That really is the connection between the meeting space and the um, main building. Um, is is it? Was was there any thought given to using that space as the entry point, or is, is that not viable? Um, when we had more space before we found out about the wetland, yeah, that's the scheme that we had because we were able to take this portion and this portion of the building and separate them more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the entrance was in there. It's too small now, given the amount of space that we have, in order to be able to accommodate, uh, accommodate that. It's just not enough room in there without it getting lost. But what's happening is you asked if there was a double set of doors. Mm. When you go into the plan and you go through the second set of doors, the second set of doors line up on that. Okay. So that when you walk in, that's a flat wall right into the large meeting room. Okay. So I mean, you, you could. So it, I mean, it seems a little funny here, but it makes I sense. So, yeah. I mean, I, I understand, you know, it's different. You could bump it out to the to as far as the entrance, right? Yeah. And just put a sitting area there with some some you know, we could put a couch there or whatever, people could sit there. Um, you mean you extending know, like the, the little something. instead of having an alcove yeah. bumping and I could do that's a what everybody connection. didn't like. We could do a planter you in could, there or you something. Could bump it out to have a and spot have to sit. Small little couches for people who are going into the hearing room. To sit there. Oh, yeah. uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I think you could hardscape that whole area, uh, Kevin. I, I, I really do. I think the way he has this drawn with that small separation really brings the scale of the building down. Yeah. I don't mind it. I thought some of I thought people you know, I didn't like that. When you look at the building, building facade, it really it, 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 it brings it down, yeah. having that, just that little sliver of space. Yeah, and having this. Yeah. Having this corner come all the way down right. and engage the ground, I think, is important. Yes. If you come out and, it, and we're in the same plane there, mm -hmm. I think it's going to kind of muddy up that. Okay. Again, I, I like it. I just thought I heard but I think, people saying. But this is a good idea. I think there's a way to do a little something here in the front that's rather than just a walkway out the front door to do a little hardscape there that can support 
a group of people that maybe want to hang off to the side and chat and not get in the way of people coming and going. I think that makes sense given the size of this building and the amount of people that are going to come into a meeting like this. Right. right. It makes sense to have a little bit of a plaza there. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like that. For the meeting minutes, if you, can we agree by consensus that we don't like panels in the back, that we are yep. looking at masonry yep. in the back? Yes. I think, yes. I think it's safe to say. Okay. Anybody have any objection to that? Well, can we do the same as we got in the front with the brick in between the panels? We can, uh, we can, we can take a look at that, sure. Well, and the other common point, I think, is every, it seems there's a consensus that the meeting room belongs closest to the school street side right i mean you had one version there that five kind of and five yeah. Kind of flips, flips, side, right? yeah and it well, just seems like you're going with seven you're inherently yeah. agreeing to that yeah and that's good I, I kind of feel like we we talked about that a, a couple of different times in the past we just wanted to, to flush it out for a second yeah right. Right. i mean just I mean, yeah, ask, wanna, someone may ask that question somebody may ask. Ask. say we look at it and it was too too intrusive, well, not only on the neighbors, mm -hmm. but uh, right. But I, I do like the idea of that being a plaza area for people, because people will come out of a meeting and talk and right. hang out, and, or they'll be going into a meeting and doing the same. So. Yeah, I mean it's a yeah. it's a detail, but even the four spots directly in front of the door and that open that negative space to the left yes. could actually be not parking spots, but could be an expansion of that spot. Yes. So you've got a, a wider. I think we showed that on the site plan actually. Um, so you don't have to cut between the cars to get to yeah. the, yeah. Yep. And it's just, we didn't get to that yeah, level. And you'll recall the last time we showed you the site, it was all one foot chunks, right? Yeah. And we just got to the point where we smoothed it off and made it look like the ground. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a little bit more we gotta do. So Any other discussion? Clear, just, just so I understand and be clear, the, the back of the building that he's gonna show for the public that's gonna come in, it's going to be brick with the panels. Um, at least brick. I'm not sure about carrying the panels around the back. We'll probably keep. We'll probably. I would recommend keeping it simple around the back. We don't have a lot of offices back there. You don't need a lot of windows. I think okay. It, right. I mean, it's got a little bit of a cold storage look. Is one of the things he said. Sorry. A lot of it is cold storage. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> You can put windows in storage. No, but we do have windows in storage, but just not a lot. Not like we have in the front. Do, 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 does the committee agree, though, that you should carry the uh, overhang around the back? Yes. I agree. Yes. I think so. Okay. Yes. Do you I do think that's going to make a big difference on the, the feel of that facade. Kind of connected to yeah. yeah. the Yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll we maintain that elegance all the way around the building. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. We may do a smaller one, though. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Always has to fight us. Hi. <laughs> well, it's, it's a conversation. Can you identify yourself for the record, please? Yeah. Susan Ann, an assistant town manager. Uh, just a quick question. Um, just for the sake of the forum, I know the forum's for information for the public and but also to generate some enthusiasm. So I agree with you, Diane, what you just said about putting brick around the back and everyone else. But the other piece of this is I just wonder about the sensitivity to Bazell being there or not being there. And if the committee wanted to talk about or decide whether the drawings or whatever you show at the forum would have the bazel or not have the bazel, well, I assumed I it would stay there. Oh, I, yeah. I yeah. took it off I just so the folks could see the back there. there. I just asked for it. To Were be you be here when it was on there, and he took it off? Yes, I was. Okay. But I just didn't know if you. I just wanted yeah. to be clear. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to see it in yeah. context without the bazel there. So. Totally get it. I just did not. Everybody liked this, so I just yeah. didn't want to do it. No, that's a good point. So we'll have the bazel. Yes. We don't want to start a revolution. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other um, discussion about uh, the presentation? Phil, you have any questions for us? Do you have everything you need? Uh, no, I'm, I'm feeling hey, Phil, pretty good. That seven, you'll show a hip roof as well. You'll show two, two designs, right? If you'd like, yeah, I, I think that'd be fine. Mm -hmm. So I think that would look sharp. I'll uh, I'll put it on there, and folks can tell me if you like it. Okay. Yeah. So so the main the, the you're talking about the main building having a hip roof as well, mm -hmm. and then we'll have one that will have like this. Like this. Yeah, let's show the contrast. Yeah, I think I with think the large opening. Yeah. But but the hip the hip roof design since day one has only been in the front. It's only been in the front. It's never, ever been in the back. Yeah, yeah. So as not to trap 
but uh, yeah, the metal. Yeah. I, yeah, I just wanted to see it so yeah. the continuity of it. I think it would look nice the okay. way he had it. With the hip roof, is it possible to bring the, the, the edge around? Will it, or would that look weird? With See, the, there's, I mean, with basically, the, 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 there's the hip roof with the overhang. Yeah. So, could the overhang still travel around without the roof above it? Or yes, that but look as I, I mentioned, I don't, I don't think that I would recommend doing the same scale of an yeah. overhang okay. in the back. So, You're the doing something a little smaller? Yeah. Okay. I think okay. probably. And, and the meeting room would have the hip. So no, yes, I, I just turned this one on because yes. it shows yeah. the hip. Yes. Yeah. 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 I think it's going to be important for the people that may come from School Street also to visualize, as we say, this hip roof doesn't go all the way to the end. So what does it look like with the partial hip and then the roof going flat? From the School Street side. One of the good things about uh, this software he has, Diane, is if we do get a question from a resident, a what if, he can pop it on. Mm. Nice. You know what I mean? He can pop it on. So I am, uh, see where I am? I'm, I'm on the neighbor's street. Right. 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 This is where I like. This is the angle I like the flat roof because it reduces the scale of the building mm -hmm. behind the, the conference room. Mm -hmm. And I, I I get the consistency piece, but that's the angle. I think I think you yeah. If you want to show them both, I think you know, one's going to float, one's going to sink. Yeah. So the perspective in this is not. I mean, human beings don't see like this. Yeah. Sure. Um, and I could change the perspective a little bit so you could back off and actually see it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's just it's a little odd looking like this. Is how how much does the hip roof? Add to the elevation, did we say? Is it 14 feet? On the main building? Yeah. It, it's not going to make a big, big difference here because it's it because the hip is on this side too and it kind of disappears as it goes. So I, I'll, I'll In turn the on. Um, it is the flat roof, which plate is still making it shorter. So, oh, right. so, so talking about, are you talking about? Yeah, this? but this is the upper. See yeah. the upper hip roof? The upper hip? Yeah, yeah. I see it's, it's not as much as I thought. Here. Yeah. Um, and I think it would look nice. I can turn them both on. Does that help to have them both on at the same time? It brings the uh, meeting room. I didn't even realize how much further it brings it down. There's two roofs. There. Yeah, there's two roofs on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can see the the difference, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, I do think what he's 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 done with the hip roof on the upper. It's tied into the bazal, which should the bazal stay, because the hip is the same pitch as the as the bazal. Well, and the colors are the same as the high school, so you're kind of trying to tie it into all of the buildings that surround it. I, I say show them both, yeah. the flat roof and the, and the hip roof. And See what we get. Yeah. yeah. Find out what people think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Everybody good? Yes. Okay. Thanks, Phil. Sure, thank you. All right, next on the agenda is a uh, discussion about the July 13th meeting and the public outreach. Um, I think we know uh, what we're going to show in terms of uh, imagery uh, for the meeting. Um, what are we going to do for outreach for that um, meeting? So we did get a flyer uh, that went out uh, last week. Uh, yeah, and George. Uh, I, I, I believe George sent it out. So okay. I don't know where he sent it to, but um, he has he has uh, a graphic of the information mm -hmm. uh, the, the information session. I, he said something about it was going on cable TV or something else and somewhere else. And, yeah, uh, he was taking care of that end of it. Presentation material-wise, what we've done with the other information sessions we did in the senior center is the designer, uh, myself, and the chairman kind of put a draft together, quickly walk through it, make sure that we're all on the same page, and then finalize it up, and then uh, we'll, we'll have it ready to go for the meeting. Um, if that's the same that you want to do for this meeting, we'll do the same. One thing that I would like to add to about the public outreach. Um, 
I'd like to ask the town manager if we could send a special mailing out to the abutters on School Street and some of them on Middlesex Ave. Uh, and I believe um, maybe some of the other streets that are near it. Um, because I think it does a couple of things. Uh, people that, you know, aren't familiar, people are doing a lot of different things. Maybe they're not in tuned and they missed it or whatever. But to show that those uh, people that are close to where this building is going to be built, we we took the time to um, s send a special mailing to them to come to the meeting. And I think it, it, it would send a compliment to us uh, that you know we're thinking about them and we just want to make sure they're the closest people to it that we would you know, uh, take this opportunity to invite them uh, by, via a special mailing. Yes. I, 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 would add, I would add 6876 and uh, 180 only because you've done the whole back of uh, yeah. the, the cul-de-sac behind it. Yeah, they're, they're kind of like a little 76 Drury Lane, Street, sorry, 168, 168, 176, yeah, okay. and 180. Those three right along, yeah. Mm -hmm. Add those, yeah. okay. Right. Yeah. That yeah. guy at 176 is going to give you a big problem. Yeah, I know. It's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. That's for sure. Is that you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you come and complain, <laughs> send, send we're going to demand to have the real chairman back. <laughs> send cookies with the invitation, okay? He'll come. Mr. Town Manager, I noticed you had this at the ready. Is this a plan that was already in the works, too? Uh, yeah, we, we uh, talked to Diane about it. Excellent. Yeah. Very good. No problem at the town end for that? I'm sorry? There's no problem at the, the town end uh, sending no, no. that out? So we'll, uh, we'll send out uh, a notice directly to these folks, I'll get uh, mailing addresses from the assessor's office and yeah. How about Excellent. some of the people on Adam Street, yeah. right across? Yeah, I think that's Adam Street, right? Like that corner? That's a, yeah, I think that's an, I think that's the ones that are highlighted, the lower, the lowest highlights, number nine and, and right. four so those. We, I think that's Adams, right? Yeah, Adam Street mm -hmm. connects uh, uh, Middlesex to Church, so yeah. uh, Kevin, are you suggesting that the folks across from the yellow that in that little block that are not currently yellow. Like the first four before yeah. the bend? Over here, Jeff, this little cluster? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep, yeah. certainly include them. In some ways, it's almost walk to the houses, and if you can see the site, in addition to the abutters, but like 171 across the street from 168, it's, a, it's an odd house because it sits between the library and that church, but. It's uh, so you're saying what one's. 171 is the only house on that side of the street between the high school and the corner. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. it, yeah. To, to the extent we're doing 168, you would suggested 168, 176. It's directly across street from 176, practically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It, it's yeah. an odd house because it's the only one over there. 171, isn't that the that uh, book next door? No. No, no. no there's it's one. It's, it's in between so abundant lines. It's on the other side. That's 187. Oh, I see. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Communicate. Yeah, I drive by there all the time. The one person, you know, is the only one over there. So, so uh, that'll be the plan to get that. Great. I think that's a great idea. Fantastic. Um, also, yeah. just uh, as an FYI, so last Friday we sent out a post um, uh, about the uh, uh, meeting coming up tonight, as well as the meetings on the 13th. Uh, the, the uh, walkthrough at five and the informational session at six, and then in town topics, <coughs> which is I think it's going out today, um, it talks about the um, kind of an update on the two projects and, and also notes the meeting of the 13th and the um, the tour and then the meeting at six o'clock. So that's great. Town topics is the only newsletter I dread. Because it comes with the tax bill. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Just on, on the, the public forum, um, I, I think it's going to be a difficult um, 
I think it's going to be difficult to get people in the middle of July yeah. vacation at 5 o'clock. I, I mean, I got here when I got here because I work until, yep. you know, 5 o'clock and sometimes it goes over. So it's too bad we didn't think about making it at 6 for people who get home at 5 and, and then meeting at 7 if that, for the informational. I, I just think 5 yep. in the middle of July. I hope we're all not expecting uh, a lot of people other than the people that are here. And, and what I, in thinking of it, what I would have rather seen is calling it an open house and having it as an open house here and having it as an open house at the Roman house. So there's nine of us, right, or ten of us. Yep. So five of us are at station at the Roman House, five of us are stationed here. It's not that long of a drive from some of the, and you, you have people go and see what that Roman House looks like. Showing pictures, yeah, mm -hmm. it, you know, people aren't going to, I may be wrong, they're not going to really get the idea of it when they see a picture. But when they walk through it, you know, they're going to they're gonna see how deficient it is. Yep you know, for, for that. Um, I mean, they'll see it here, and we'll have talking points as we're walking people around if there are people that... that are I, so I nice think that's a good up, idea. Right? Who's to say that we don't do this again in September? You know, leading up to the town meeting in the fall. Yeah. Well, that, that, yeah, that, is that when we should have something like this, rather than in the middle of July? We'll should we now. have it in September when <clears throat> school's back in session, people are back here? I, 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 I don't want to speak for the, for the chairman. But I think he, he I, I'm not so sure, I, I think what he was trying to do was just to show the progress today and that, you know, that a committee's been working on this for a while and this is the direction that we're going on because clearly, you know, we're not as advanced uh, on this as we were when we did the uh, information session uh, with the senior center. So this is a little bit further behind. I think he was just trying to let people know that the, the, that we're working on it, and, and I don't think he was trying to hit all the deficiencies and hit all, all the major points to sway people yes or no or, or anything like that. I think he was really trying, Kevin, just to bring it out and say, you know, we've been working on this. This is the direction we're going in, and and he even he even you know he even you know he even called it you know a, you know when we put the flyer together it was a, a community information center. A back and forth form. It was just information on where we are, where we're going. I think we can still do um, and take an opportunity to do what uh, you're suggesting and have um, both buildings open for the public to go through at a, at a separate time. And one of the, so one of the things, and it it may have some deficiencies in, in terms of whether it engages people like physically being there, but. George did a, uh, a walk through, I think it was maybe in March or the thereabouts. Um, and <clears throat> I think he worked with Ken Lord from the school department. Ken was doing the filming and he literally just went through every space, every space in the building and was talking about some of the challenges. Um, went downstairs into the, the basement. And um, so, you know, it's not certainly the same thing as physically being there, but I think we can still. The other thing with the Roman House is uh, there's a lot of sensitive information there with the, with the pupils, and we'd really have to coordinate that with Glenn to make sure that anything that is sensitive isn't out in the open, like a, 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 the working building that it is. Sure. Yeah. Maybe even, even beyond out in the open, it's just there, and it's the, it, it, it would require a, a, some level of staffing from the school administration, not just people from this group. Right. And I don't want to speak for their availability at 5 o'clock on a I think like you're having another one, maybe late September. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're we're going to have to have yeah. we're going to have something have meetings yeah. we have numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, I, I I think um, I think the the purpose of having the people though come to the Roman House, um, if there were a way, I, I don't think you're going to. I think if I were just going to go in and say, gee, I, I've never seen what that building looks like. Let me, let me just go in. I mean, the minute you open the door, you're going to get, it's going to hit you right in the face and 
walk around and, and say, this is really how it's never meant to be a administrative building. Um, you, uh, you know, there are ways of putting a barrier up so people don't go in the office but can see it from the outside, just look in. And, you know, there's, there's no one walking inside an office. I don't know what yeah. we're going to do here at the town hall if we're going to do the same thing. If we're going to have doors open that people are actually going to be able to walk in or are we going to have like a barrier that the people are going to walk by and say, okay, there's the accountant's office yeah. well, and there's the recreation well, office, yeah. you know, um, or are you going to have the department head stay that night mm -hmm. and feel free to answer a question that anybody might say? Well, what do you have a problem here with your room? Yeah, What's right. the problem here with your room? I, I, you I know? think from the yeah. from the Roman House perspective, people seeing it and understanding. I mean, when you walk up the stairs and you see this fake wall with file cabinets behind it, kind of shoved in the landing of the second floor. Yeah, you can get the sense that that's not the right space. But the time and place for that may not be the 13th. But I do think it's important for people to have a really good understanding that it was never designed for its current purpose and it doesn't work well for its current purpose. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, right. It's, as this was a pre-K K building, which isn't really designed for administrative offices either, but even another step further, a house from the 1880s is that much more further removed from its, its current function. All right. So if a, if a suggest, I'm sorry, um, I'm mm -hmm. trying to follow along with what Kevin said. So if he's concerned about the five o'clock issue, if, and we, and we do have two buildings, five to six might be Roman house, six to seven might be town hall and then seven o'clock we start our meeting for the next but june 13th july 13th yeah, so we, we're we're already already stuck there uh, maybe oh, yep, this yep, is something yep, that yep, we can yep. talk about as in, in, in next steps yep, and maybe yep. for the if next public forum. session this shouldn't be the only one absolutely yeah i agree we don't, we don't have numbers i mean i i i think again i think the chairman wanted to just let people know yep it was out there. Yep. I happen to agree with Kevin in the middle of July, you're going to get three people, and two of them have already been through it. Uh, one of them was probably sitting in the audience. So, I mean, I, 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 it's something that we, we, we you, know, you guys asked to do, yep. and we're gearing up to do it. That's right. So, you, it was yeah. requested by this committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll do it. All right? We'll do it. Okay. Can we put um, Jeff signage on the rotary box sign about oh. this? Yeah. You know, that's a great idea. Open house information or whatever. You know, information on the rotary box. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. That's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. Any discussion for next steps, or do we just cover that here? Just now? well. So, uh, as you as you're aware, we do have a deadline. And the, the deadline is, uh, you know, mid-November-ish uh, for appropriation requests on both these projects. So we, we need to have um, the design pretty much wrapped up in the next two meetings so that we can get the estimating done okay. uh, so that we have enough time to, to, to work with finance and board of selectmen. Um, I believe that uh, you know there was an email that went around today for us to, to give an update to the board of selectmen in August, uh, and we'll gear up to do that also. So it'll be our third visit to the board of selectmen. Uh, but steps-wise, uh, we probably have one or two more of these, okay. and then uh, we're sending it off to the estimator. We, we know what the systems are. We've discussed those. We know what the materials are going to be. We've discussed those. Um, he's laid out and demonstrated that everything fits. It might not be the final location, just like when we, we did the senior center, we, we, we did three meetings, shifting interior walls around. It, did, it doesn't affect the it doesn't affect the estimate. Okay. So uh, at the, at this stage, so as long as we can get that estimate estimate out to the estimator by the end of July, uh, I think we I think we're going to hit our targets. Okay. Right. And well, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Town Manager, uh, just in case uh, people are looking for a timeline for 
uh, town meeting and numbers and things like that are prepared to um, give a thumbnail of what we're uh, looking at? So th there has been some preliminary discussion. Obviously, the board selectmen will ultimately have to set the uh, date. Okay. Um, uh, we, there was a discussion uh, a few weeks ago. Um, the moderator, uh, Jonathan Eaton, uh, Jimmy O'Connell, uh, John participated, a few others just kind of doing a wrap up of town meeting and looking at the special. And uh, we're looking at some dates in uh, November. I think uh, at this point in time, it's more likely than not that we're. Um, looking at something like the 19th of November. So one of the things that was talked about, um, I've heard it up from several different folks, is the desire to have the um, special on a Saturday as opposed to a weekday evening. Um, certainly there's the groups in town that uh, would prefer a, a daytime meeting as opposed to uh, an evening meeting. So the 19th, is a Saturday. Uh, it's some of the issues that we have to be um, considering here is that um, we want to have uh, free cash certified. So as of 7 1 every year, free cash uh, goes back to zero, and then the finance director and others um, have to um, close the books on the existing fiscal year. There's various documents that the assessor and the treasurer collector and finance director have to pull together and they uh, have to get that off to the Department of Revenue and then DOR will issue a um, uh, free cash number so last year the free cash we received the free cash number on November 11th the year before was 1031 so you know obviously I've had conversations with Brian Perry the finance director about the need to try to uh, get everything wrapped up as soon as possible. You know, you have 351 cities and towns that all yep. for their free cash. So as soon as you get you can get into the head of the queue, and he'll he noted that he will uh, advise our, our rep at DOR that we do need the number for uh, special town meetings. So hopefully that'll move the process along. But my, my expectation is that, that that number will be provided to us by late October, early November. The other, on the other end, um, we, we have to be mindful of not having the meeting um, beyond the date that the tax rate is set because the Department of Revenue um, has concerns about having a special town meeting um, beyond that date because it'll impact the tax rate. When so does that generally happen? The, the uh, assessor comes before the Board of Selectmen the second, their second meeting in November, which is the 24th and 26th of November, um, to uh, recommend a tax rate. So that's why I say it's more likely they're not going to be in early November or early to mid-November. Is the 19th the Saturday before Thanksgiving? Yes. Yes. So from the time you get the oh, certified so cash, you know, the ones are not good, but that's better than the two. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So from the time you get the certified cash, how long do we have to wait before the finance committee has to advertise for their public meeting? Well, so there's a whole sequence of events that have to happen. The first step would be uh, the selectmen uh, would need to call the meeting, and so tentatively, and I'm just going through a very tentative schedule at this point. Uh, we would be looking for the board uh, to call the meeting uh, at their August 8th uh, meeting. Um, the warrant would be signed on the 26th of September. Uh, then there's some advertising that needs to happen. Everything is scripted in terms of the, the number of days um, that, ha that advertising has to happen and so on. The um, Finance Committee public hearing uh, would really be scheduled for October 18th. Um, and then the Finance Committee has to get the, their recommendation to the town clerk um, seven, no, no less than seven days before the special. So in this case, um, November 
10, since November 11th is a holiday. Um, yeah, so look, that's kind of the rough schedule at this point. Assuming the 19th. How do you feel about that? I, for me, the biggest the, the, the biggest item is to make sure that we have the estimates uh, completed. It's, it's, you know, into the estimate. After we have the estimates going into the estimate, we're still going to meet as a board mm -hmm. to refine those little nuances that are irritating and didn't, that you know make define that wow factor of yeah, this is this is it, um, but won't affect you know the numbers we're carrying in the estimate. So. Uh, as long as we can get the documents, the estimators are taking about three to four weeks right now. So as long as we can get the documents out uh, again by the end of July, early August, then around Labor Day we'll have numbers, and we don't really need to have that uh, num. You know, you guys can kick around the numbers and kick around what you might want to keep or not keep. We can revise the numbers so that by the end of September. Um, you know, you're ready to go before the finance committee and meet the, de the deadlines that Jeff have just, has just uh, sure. identified. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with it, but we just, unfortunately, are going to keep meeting every other week uh, during the summer to, to, to meet the schedule. Do we need to meet more often than that? I don't think the architect can draw that fast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, the, the, every other week is pretty fast for a project, believe it or not. and. Uh, you know, there's been some meetings where Phil will send us out the, 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 the stuff ahead of time, and he comes to the meetings, and two of the pages are completely totally developed yeah, because yeah. in the 48 hours he's developed them. So I think that I think if we keep to the two week schedule. Yeah. That's just because of all. So, but uh, no, I think I, I think we're good shape. I mean, I really do. Okay. And, and, and in between, you know, we're getting the geotech done so that. So, you know, structural can certify that we're right, and, and the estimator can make sure that the quantities of cut and fill are right. So all those things are all going to come together at the same time. Excellent. Okay. Any other discussion? Uh, any public comment this evening? Okay. Uh, well, I do have one, Mr. Chair. Sure. Mr. Allen. Uh, so on the flat roof, going back to that <clears throat> option seven, on the rear portion where it's the, going to be the flat design, could you use the type of, for one of the better term, the fake mansard roof like we have in the high school? Would you use that there or would you leave it flat? Yeah, um, I think, um, well, first off, flat is. Uh, I, I, it's not actually flat. This is uh, for the benefit of those that well, 30, 40 years ago, people used to design dead flat roofs with the idea of being with the rain. You know, the water only gets so deep before it finds a drain. Um, we don't, but we, we don't design them like that anymore. We'll slope to drain, uh, and that's a code requirement. So um, there will be a little bit of pitch, but not like you see on the slope portions. Um, yeah, it won't be anything you can see from the ground or from the from a distance. That's right. Right. Um, but it will have positive drainage. Uh, and the question of whether or not we have anything on that roof uh, is really going to be dependent upon what goes up there and um, if it's if you can see it and if it's going to be a nuisance to look at and if it's going to be loud and we talked about the ability to do some screening that has acoustical properties to it. Um, so I think that's more of a discussion with the mechanical engineer to find out what the plan is and what they might want to put on that roof and talk about whether or not we think it's going to be an issue we have to resolve. If we, if we need to do that, we can. Would, yeah. would, again, to try and draw out the feelings of everybody, would it be safe to say that if we needed to shield HVAC equipment uh, for noise or visual, and we uh, would, would the solution of the high school be the solution you're looking for, which is a screen that's up a foot off the, off the. It's also dependent on how much is up there, right? Yeah. Um, that screen is, I think, designed the way it is because it's pretty close to the edge. And if we don't have a lot up there, we can put that in towards the center. You won't see and, it. And you, you won't see it. It's going to be hard to see it unless you're up the hill or something anyway. Um, so it's really going to depend on what's there. If they say, well, we need to put three big large pieces of equipment on there and they need to be spread out so we can get some air circulation, and that puts them where you're going to be able to see them. And we can model them and see where you're going to be able to see them from. Um, that will be. 
on one decision, and the second part will be whether or not we think they're going to be noisy and we need to do something about that. Okay. Uh, that that'll, that'll, probably that'll probably show up in design development, actually. But one other question, Mr. Chair. Um, on the floor plans, and I assume you're going to have some floor plans at the meeting also. I, I think that makes sense. In addition to these elevations and so forth, it's going to be some floor plans. Mm -hmm. yep. I would suggest you put some dimensions on it. 30 by 25. Yeah. Well, the, wants, the public will want to know, well, you know, how long is this building? Sure. How wide is this building? Because right now there are none outside dimensions on that building. It, it, and they may even want to think about it on the elevations also, you know, 17, 17, 17, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14 and then yeah, the individual uh, to give them some idea the to what the height is to the east, just so they can comprehend what what the building looks like. That, that, that is a good point. And it's also something that was requested at the uh, senior center, too. And we, you know, we put on the, not only the square footage, but we put on the, you know, 8 by 12. Sure. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Okay. Anybody else? Any uh, community members? Anything? There's a question along those lines, and I'm just throwing this out there, whether it would be advantageous or not, uh, is another question. But you know, in, for, for folks who you know aren't in the business of uh, architectural design and all, w would it be helpful um, to, to show you know a picture of the the building, um, you know, in, in one frame, uh, sitting next to the high school, another frame to, so so that there's an ability to compare. People know right now physically what the scale of the high school is in mm -hmm. terms of height and so on. Showing give them a reference. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I don't know. Like, I mean, we could, we, we can look into that. I know that George also wanted to have a picture of this wing uh, to remind people what was there. I mean, it was a pretty. Pretty sizable building is there. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I think, it, you know, it, I know in his mind he had a series of steps that he was trying to present to show where we've come and where we've gone. Phil, Phil, Phil actually plops it on. Is that what you're doing, Phil? I was gonna scroll out here and see if we can see the two buildings together, because and we've only modeled the front portion of the school. There's there's more to it at the rear. That's a good view too. But there's the school, and again, that's just the front. There's some. St I don't know the plan that well, but I think this. If I had a guess, there's gymnasiums and stuff in the back that stick out yeah. even further. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. But there's a pretty good. I mean, I, this I, whole building is just about the same size. It's just the front it's part. Of I think stuff. that's a, to your point. I think I think that's a very good way to show it, mm -hmm. either this way or side by side. But this way gives the visual. Yeah, you could even side by side that. is going to be odd, right? Yeah, because it's yeah. Just, and, it's and, and have to park the building in the parking lot. And maybe do the cutoff lines so you can tell, you can hide the fact that you don't have the gym it, at the it back. It does look yeah. small compared to the yeah. high school. Well, that's for that's sure. important. <laughs> but that's an that, but that's yeah. because people have said the word you know have discussed and questioned the size of this, right. and, and being able to show that it's just the equivalent to the front portion <clears> of the high school, I think is very valuable. The other way to do it is simply do a square footage comparison. Yeah, say the existing two buildings are this plus this, this right. new building's this, so it's only X different in terms of yep. square footage, would be a way to give you an apples to apples comparison to the facilities being used. I have no idea, but I don't know any of those statistics. On oh, we have those, yeah, 191 and change for the high school. Yeah, I was going to say. Well, I was, talking about the, yeah, I was talking about this building oh, in Roman oh, House okay. versus the new building. Yeah. Because that's functional equivalence, right? Right, so this building is 20,000 square feet. Roman's 3,5, Roman something like that. 3,000, 5,000, uh, something like that. Yeah, it's about. Yeah. So twenty four thousand or yeah. yeah, but don't forget the old town hall, the arts center, because yeah. we have uh, and school and administration in there. Exactly. And the yeah. Schools are also in more than just the Roman yeah. and yes. here we have people in schools that aren't teachers and students, and like we should include. Yeah. So so that would be one way to compare. But I think this visual will help a lot of folks even more than the numbers. Mm -hmm. And again, maybe not quite that that far out, but just to show the comparison between the front of the high school versus that building. I think it's a fantastic visual representation. It's a very good idea. And Paul, you bring up a good point that I think it yeah. needs to be emphasized too that the school administration is located in different buildings. Yes. Yeah. And, and yes. It more, is the IT director at the high school going to be a person who will be located in the new town hall? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think so. He's on the third floor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that square footage at the high school, I mean, that's, you know, 
that's some square footage that we should be considering. We can we can we can tally all that up and try and do yeah. a chart. Yeah. I will not want to but someone at the school district should help with where people are. Yeah. And, or, or George might have the numbers even yeah. handier. That's we'll volunteer right. George since he's not here. And the fact that they're all spread out everywhere, you know, it's just not efficient. So we are gonna do a comparison of two yeah. the two buildings yeah. and or kind two, of two plus buildings. Okay. To, to the square foot of building. Do you have a, a handout with like bullet points for that? Or were you just thinking of showing it on the screen? I think that'd be good to hand it. We'd have you have a with the sandwich board. So yeah. <laughs> what, what, what George asked us to do was two things, Kevin. He asked us to put together a flyer with mm -hmm. both projects on it to be ready to go to the water bill in August yep. mm -hmm. and to create a trifle like we did for the senior center with you know facts of the project for, for, for the meeting on the 13th and that it can also be handed out left at the library left at the counter or wherever okay so if we can incorporate the square footage uh comparisons in right. that flyer yeah. that trifold yeah i think we can do that well we have, there's not a lot of time to get that out right we're hitting july 4th oh, this is the 13th so that's gonna have to be we'll, we'll, we'll get it out yeah we'll, we'll have something for the 13th we'll, though we'll, right yeah, yeah we'll have we'll have it ready for the 13th We'll have something to hand out on the 13th. Oh, I thought that that trifle was to be mailed out or something. Well, that, that's no, no, water bills. Water bills, water bills being about. mailed out in August. And that's both projects. And that's first. That's one hot, one side, like we did the last time, one side's the water, one side's the town, town hall. Town hall school administration, and the other side's the senior center. And it folds up and goes into the water bill. Okay. Great. That was pretty successful. That was, yeah. So everybody knows something's going on. <laughs> Good. Unless they don't drink water. All right. Or they have a what? Any other business? Um, before I let you go, hold on, before I take that motion, have uh, Phil or Dan, have you guys been by the student parking lot at the high school? We went there on the way here today. Okay. Uh, I, yes. would, I would advise you to take photos because at some point a landscape designer was going to want to see those photos. I took photos and video last night. Okay. Yeah, you um, see what we're talking about yeah, now? Yeah. No, I mean, it's exactly what I kind of thought it would be. The Beautiful. South Pole is kind of really close to the wetland, though. I don't know if they got a wetland permit for the front door. <laughs> <laughs> you can ride the Ferris wheel into the front door. <laughs> All right. I have a motion to adjourn on the table. Uh, John Doherty and seconded by Jack Holloway. Uh, all in favor to adjourn? Aye. 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 Motion unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. We'll see you on the 13th or maybe sooner if we're not on the common or at the carnival. Thank you for yeah. Thank you. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for. Yes, Kevin. Uh, the, the, um, so the.